respected spiritual teacher and the founder of the Center for Creative Consciousness, an organization dedicated to empowering humankind's spiritual awakening. Jonet created the Soul Body Fusion Technique for healing and wholeness. The book Soul Body Fusion is available in many languages. I use the word soul to be the word for the part of all divinity, all essence that we call ours. So, so you might say that, that here's me and there's this big V and the smallest part of the V I think is my soul. But actually it's connected to all that is. The soul isn't discrete, it doesn't end and it's not just mine. The gateway into it feels like it's mine. So soul is us at the non-material dimensions. Clearly I've never been, or I hadn't always been fully in my body. I've been kind of a space queen and living in my head and my thoughts and yeah, my body was fine. Um, but I realized that you can't grow spiritually unless you're grounded physically. You can't leave your body and then just escape. And one day I was reading a book that mentioned that sometimes people aren't, their soul isn't aligned with their body. And I thought, how could that be? I assumed they were naturally aligned. And so I thought, I better check to see if I'm aligned. So I closed my eyes and, and I just asked the question, am I aligned? And I could feel the vibration of my body and the vibration of my soul and they didn't match. They, they weren't fighting, but they didn't really support each other. They were in different planes. And I realized that that's not so good. It might be a lot better if they were on the same team. So I just visualized grabbing my body and grabbing my soul and bringing them together and lifting to a place where they merged and felt harmonic. I did it a 15 minute visualization. That was all, I didn't feel anything. Uh, but later I told other people about this little process and they felt something, you know, they would shake or they would get hot or cry. And I go, wow, something is happening. There really is an essence of our soul coming home and our body opening up in our cells to hold that higher frequency that it hasn't been able to hold before. And what happens with what I then named later soul body fusion, but it's really about embodying the greatest amount of our divinity that we can hold at the moment, knowing there's more and more and more, so there's no end. So it's soul body fusions again and again. And so I've, I've written a book and I teach that because I realize that it's the missing piece, that we can't be whole, we can't be healthy if we're not fully here. And, most, and many of us on a spiritual path aren't fully here. We're more committed to here, to the heavens than to earth. Once we bring it together, earth opens up, life gets more sensual and juicy and abundant. When I become more whole or more me, I'm more magnetic to the things and the people and the possibilities that I'm supposed to attract. And I'm more um, anti-magnetic to the things that I shouldn't have in my life. So that's what made it easier to give up my home and my marriage because it no longer suited the vibration I had become. And then without effort, I attract new opportunities, new friends, new travels. So it changes everything because the vibration sets up a new world. Is a life possible without problems? If you decide that a challenge is a problem, then you're going to have problems. If you see it as, ah, this is a challenge to test my strength, test my ability, test my resolve, um, make me a better person, then you're always going to have that. Spiritual growth does not give you nirvana. And it doesn't, like I said before, it doesn't always give you ease. But you, so you just become a better surfer. It is, and then you look for waves. So it gives you just more confidence, more power, more support. Because what I realize is the bigger my consciousness becomes and grounded, 
the more the angels, the guides, and the beings from the stars see me. It's like I pop up and they go, oh, we didn't know John had existed. And then they go, oh, we can help her. And so what I see is happening on earth now is that so many of us are popping up through these veils and the greater universe is saying, wow, there is life on earth. We can help now. And so we have so much more support as we grow and get lighter. I think what's important is that people, or, or what goes wrong, is people see their value, and, and I do too, from how, they get, how it's reflected from the outside world. Do people like them? Do, you know, are they successful? And the more we can be self-reflecting, and where we get our true urgency, our true core, inside. It will be reflected outside, but I think we get confused as to what our self-worth is because we think it has something to do with other people. The reason it's called self-worth is we must value ourselves. That's been the missing piece, and, and we've fallen into trying to keep up with the Joneses or our, our parents' voices in our head saying we're not good enough. And that's just got to end because not good enough is probably our biggest downfall. Also, it's important to release. We've all made mistakes. You know, we didn't get here um, without doing some really stupid things. And what happens, what I find, is when my vibration quickens, when I bring in more of my spirit, my divine self, there's a quickening of the vibration and things of a lower vibration kind of fall away. Once uh, I had done a meditation and I got to a very high vibration and I went out for a jog and I could feel like this big piece of, of steel falling out. And I go, wow, that must have been some huge issue that's just gone. And I come back and I meditate and I talk to White Eagle and I want to know what that huge thing was, right? And White Eagle says something I always remember. He said, when you release something, move away so you don't step in it again. So I realize I don't have to analyze what I've let go of and why. Just let go of it and appreciate that your quickening vibration will bring more and it becomes a beneficial vortex. You know, I just want to remind people that what's happening in this new energy is uh, the opening up of really multidimensional worlds. And you may, you may go in and out of what seems like consciousness or what seems like a normal reality. And those other realities are opening up. Uh, I was communicating today with a, a Native American elder, and she said she's going through a process of actually living in parallel worlds. And she said that it's, it's difficult even for, for her as an elder um, because most people don't even know those, those parallel intersecting worlds exist, much less know how to live there. And so our elders, our medicine people, and our shaman have always moved into this multidimensional place. And there's beginning to be more holes so that more of us who don't know anything are moving up and are being faced with the beautiful complexity of the world. And when I say that multidimensionality is complex, we usually go, oh, oh no, and, and we get a pit in our stomach because we don't like complexity. But what I'm tasting in these multidimensional worlds is you have love multiplied times infinity because you have such complexity and everything loves everything else. So what's truly transcendent is the love that's available.